Welcome to Auction School. <laughs> Will you give me 20? Will you give me 20? 10, 10, 20, 20. 8 and a quarter, 8 and a quarter, 9, 9, 9 and a quarter, 10 and a half, 10 and a half, 75, 75. So oh, give yourself a good job. Uh, what 5,000? What 5 on a bomb and 5, 2? Not 2, hey, but I've been 2 and 3, 3 and 4, hey, but sold by number 1, 2, 2. Here we go, rock and roll. The Missouri Auction School was founded in 1905. It's the oldest and largest auction school in the world. It trains auctioneers in every aspect of the auction profession and is known as the Harvard of auctioneering. Introduce the item, ask for 10, drop to five, I'll give you the five, and then go to six. So we start every morning at auction school with group drills. Batty, butter, 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 eight and a quarter, eight and a quarter, eight and a half, eight and a half, 90, 90, 80, 80, 70, 70. Just like an athlete would warm up, we need to warm up. Very good, okay, give yourself a hand, good job. At auction school, the most important aspect is that auction chance. At $100, bid now, two, now, three. $2 bid now, three, now, three, with three. $20 bid now, 25, 25, and sold. It's the very foundation of the auction profession. I'm at $20 bid now, 30 now, 30, will you give me 30? I'm at $20 bid. Okay, let's try that. The auction chant is two numbers, the money that you have bid and the money that you're asking for. I have one dollar bid, now two, now two, will you give me two? I'm a two dollar bid, now three, now three, will you give me three? I'm a two dollar bid. Will you give me 20, will you give me 20? Feel that? Now 50, now 50, will you give me 40 dollar bid? That's it, that's it, good job. And as they sell more and more, those filler words will slur, so it'll move a little bit faster. $70 bid, now one, now one, one dollar bid, now two. 15, 17, will you give me 17? Got a dollar, 16, 17, 17, will you give me 17? Give me 42, I'm at 41 here, will you give me 42? Put it at 42, thanks, sir. I'm in a 400, eight and 400 on a port, sold 375. And that's what creates that nice, smooth rhythm chant. Rubber baby buggy bumper, basic rhythm, okay? Learning the auction chant in a classroom setting is important, but you're not really an auctioneer until you get to go to a real auction and sell real items to real people. Hours, fives, all been six hours, it been six. So five hours your way. So at the student auction, you never know what's going to come up for sale, and so you got to be ready for anything. First item's lot 75. You got a stack of three turtles. You got an old tablecloth, jumper cables, very useful. Ooh, a cuckoo clock. Looks like another stack of turtles. Lot number six six three. It's a meat cleaver. Yeah! So one of the most fascinating aspects of the process is the transformation that the students make throughout the program. So often when they first come to the school, they're hesitant, they aren't sure what they're doing. A lot of them are, are frightened even. Once they get up and they sell and they realize, yes, I can do this. I can really do this. You can hear it in their voice. I'm an auctioneer. Give yourself a hand. Great job. That was really good. Good job. Okay, now let's do the dance. We'll go up to nine. で愛されるのは普段コミュニケーションの取り方が人間同士だとできないことが名前は大平彫子スクールは11年目になります Choko School in Tokyo, Japan teaches people how to be mascots. Because the business of being a mascot is big. Really big. Mascots in Japan aren't just for sports. They're for police departments, towns, malls, airlines, even prisons. They're a staple of Japanese culture. In Osaka alone, at one time, there was one mascot per 6,000 residents. So she teaches them to wave, to dance, to pose, and her class is diverse. He's a former chef, she's a housewife, this guy he is a professional mascot. Their ultimate goal? It's to perform. But of course, there are rules. Number one, no talking. Eh, to character and the 
夢をまた崩してしまうので声は出さないとか。Number two, don't show any skin. 着替えをするところを見せない。それは中に人は入っていないのでなのに見せたらそれ嘘になってしまうので見せない。Number three, don't be rude. These rules are here for one reason. A mascot is more than just a costume. ちょっと待ってちょっと待ってはいどうぞ<笑>ただこう着ぐるみがいるだけでいるだけではやはりでただのキャラクターですこの子が動いてそれを表現するからこそ魅力的になるの Being a mascot is about becoming something greater than yourself You can escape into the character In fact, that's what you're supposed to do 着ぐるみは私の性格を変えたり生き方を変えたりともうすべてを変えてくれた存在です。Choco's been doing this for over 30 years. And her students, well, they seem like they're on the right track. Keep on practicing, guys. A professional butler is somebody who is loyal, flexible, discreet, hardworking, honest, but most important, it is a person who has the ability to put somebody else's wishes before your own. That is what makes this profession so very, very difficult. At the age of 21, I became a butler. Nowadays, I am chairman of the International Butler Academy. The International Butler Academy is located in the beautiful village of Simpelveld in the Netherlands. We have about 135 rooms, 80,000 square feet, completely dedicated to the training of butlers. Our students live here in our building. They come、uh, literally from every country in the world, aged from 18 to 68. Students learn about housekeeping, house management, estate management, regular things like even suitcase packing, silver shining, shining shoes. The list is enormous. There is an incredible amount of training to be done in 10 weeks. Discipline here at、uh, the International Buffalo Academy is very, very important. In order to get a job done, you need discipline. I think in order to be successful, You need discipline, and discipline here at school is something we embrace and not something that we are afraid of. Here at school, we always joke about what employers want. They need a clean toilet,、uh, they want a warm bed, and they want a hot meal. And those three things are most important for everyone. You go right, you go left. My wife and I, we have our own butler. I'm very fortunate. I've had a, a private butler now for the past 17 years, and this person is very, very important to me. <laughs> Being a butler can certainly be a, a wonderful career simply because if you are responsible for the well being of the family, for their happiness, that is obviously very, very, very important. उड़ू अफो घर में हुआ कोई दिन में खर्च पर्चा हुआ कोई दिन में जो जस्तु मेरे घर में पका खाँचु स्कूल में जु मेरे नाम दुर्गी कामी क्लास दस मेरे उमेर सिक्सटी नाइन एक घंटा बीस मिनट लग् दस बजे स्कूल लग् चार बजे छुट्टी हो मैं मन पर्ने विषय सामजिक रनसंख्या ये मैं मन पर्दा मैं अब सान उमेर का सर सर भापनी सर मैं जानी एटा म विद्यार्थी को डिस्प्लिन सर सर मैं हाफ टाइम को समय में साथीस फुटबल खेलना भी मैं मन पर्च 
भलिबल खेल मन पर्च इन खेल खेले मो आत्मा सन्तुष्टि करद अभी मर में आईपुग्ता खी दुई घंटा लगता उकालो ओरालो दुई घंटा में जानी होमवर्क करूँ अभी निद्रा लग् बुढ़ो मं अंदु अभी भोलिपल्ट उड़ू अभी उ पढ़ु तो मैं धर अगड़ीसम पढ़् मन लगे बच्चा में स्कूल गई तर स्कूल नजिक थे अभी पढ़ने भाई कुरो को महत्व थे तीखे मत कि मैं ज्ञान आएर यह उमेर में मैं चाहिए सबला मैं शिक्षा को एटा ज्योति देखा को लगी वृद्ध अवस्था में गए इसी पढ़् पर्द रह मैं सब मनोबल बढ़ा को लगी सब मैं राष्ट्र अंतरराष्ट्र सब जानी तल्लो वर्ग को युवा बाला वृद्धा सब मैं एट आत्मा बल को लगी ओहो पढ़् पर्ने रहो रह सब मैं मत उसाल को लगी मैं ये उमेर में पढ़े Americans, we love ice cream. Each person eats about 24 quarts of it per year. And that's for one big reason. It tastes amazing. But someone had to teach Ben and Jerry's how to do it. Turns out, that guy, he works at Penn State. This is Dr. Bob Robert. Hold on. Okay, this is Dr. Bob Roberts. He teaches ice cream courses at Penn State. I do. I have two courses: ice cream short course and ice cream 101. Side note: These are the type of books ice cream professors read. Okay, back to the story. Part of the reason that ice cream is so good in the U.S. is that we've been teaching ice cream for 125 years. And Bob, he's been teaching at Penn State for 25 of those. And he's had some pretty famous students. Companies like Unilever, Nestle, Breyers, Ben and Jerry's—you um, name the company, they've sent people here. That's because the Penn State Creamery is on the forefront of ice cream technology. Ice cream is a formulated food. There is no naturally occurring ice cream. You have to put the ingredients together and process it to make ice cream. Bob and his department—they spend their time figuring out how to make ice cream even better. When we look at, at studying ice cream, we study ice cream from cow to the cone. So we look at what happens on the farm, what happens with the milk. Wait, there's a farm? We have a, a herd of about 250 or so milking Holsteins, and yes, they are on campus. So yeah, he knows ice cream, but he says that he's not an ice cream purist. I'm not sure what an ice cream purist is, but I wouldn't eat frozen yogurt if I had the opportunity to eat ice cream. <laughs> Yeah, well, that does make sense considering he is the authority on ice cream. Bob, what's your favorite flavor? Hmm, dulce de leche. Ooh, yeah. 